sponsored by Women Technology. Take advantage of our end of summer promotion, offering a $30 off bundle discount on the whole test takeout panel controls through September 2021. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's September 2021, the last time we did a video on the F-16 fire control radar range while search main mode was 11th October 2019 so nearly two years have passed since this point it's not finished but it has changed a lot so what we're going to do now is an interim video to update you on the main changes of the main range while search mode of the fire control radar in the f-16 including dual target track this will be a semi-formal video just to last the next year or so until the radar's finished and then we'll do a final video just to wrap it all up. As well as talking about the radar, we'll also talk about the HSD which is related to the radar and has changed as well. I figure the way we'll do this is to just blast through the radar from scratch, cover everything but cover it very quickly. So we're in an F-16 here, we're paused, lots of baddies and goodies charging towards us on an endless cycle. I will link this mission in the video description so you can download it if you want and play the same thing we've got a donor AWACS aircraft feeding us information because realistically that's probably what you're going to see nowadays in your mission just the obvious stuff make sure that the fire control radar is turned on that switch there forward next we're going to press dogfight missile override switch to missile override this will get us in a BVR beyond visual range type fighting mode which is where we want to be so let's press that automatically selected our missiles to medium range missiles you can see there we'll automatically bring up our fire control radar on this mfd first remember we can't do anything unless this screen is soy a sensor of interest which will be shown by having the outline around the outside if it's not soy then press dms aft or down to make sure it is soy so let's get rid of it it says not soy dms down soy we are here we are pointing that way and this is a top down display the range scale on the right here, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 nautical miles, controlled by this range here, currently 40 miles, could be 80, could be 20. We can also use the radar slew axes or controls, as you can see here, RDR cursor switch up, down, left, right, to move our acquisition cursor, which is this guy here, sometimes known as a TDC, uh, around. We can also increase the scale by going up like that and down like that. Next is our azimuth display, currently set to 60 A6. That means it will scan 60 degrees to the right of us, 60 degrees to the left of us. We can have 30 left, 30 right, the limits shown by this line here and here, or 10 either way. We can then move the acquisition cursor around and the limits of what the radar will display will be shown between these lines here. These guys, as you'll see, we will lose contact with them and the white bricks will disappear because they're no longer in our scan azimuth. Speed up, and they're gone. Repopulate, let's say A30 I like to use generally, and you'll see that these targets will start to repopulate. In terms of our elevation of scan, it's measured in bars. Each bar is about six or seven degrees, I think. Currently four bars, so there's about 20 something degrees of total elevation coverage. You can change that to one bar, two bars, four bars I tend to leave it at four bars for general purpose but if you want to speed up the scan refresh rate you can reduce the number of bars but just beware that you also reduce the elevation of coverage of your radar by doing that speaking about elevation of coverage if you want to know what it is at a certain range our acquisition cursor will tell us so if we know 40 miles is up here then this is about 20 miles move our acquisition cursor to about 20 miles here you can see at that point with the current amount of bars set we are scanning at a maximum scan height of 37,000 feet and a minimum of 16,000 feet if we were at say 30 miles the acquisition cursor up to 44,000 feet down to 9,000 feet like the way that we can change the center of our azimuth by moving our acquisition cursor left or right you can see we're changing the center of azimuth of our scan between these two bars we can also do the same up and down in terms of elevation by pressing either our antenna elevation axis or the controls here clockwise and counterclockwise and we can move the center of the radar scan in elevation up 99,000 to 73,000 down 31,000 to minus 3,000 we also have a representation here is our elevation carrot 
it's bopping up and down in little four bars as you can see because we've set four bars if we went to one it would just be bopping by right, actually staying exactly still two bopping in two bars four bopping in four bars the center is adjusted by our elevation control as we saw before so you can see we're now up here that's the maximum height we can scan the radar up that's the minimum height we can scan the radar down that is the center of the radar scan possible so let's move it roughly back down to center and we're now scanning at 20 nautical miles away up to 40,000 feet and down to 17,000 feet that's very important to understand that very similar down the bottom we have our azimuth carrot this guy here bopping left and right each time he reaches the end that is a bar of scan the next bar the next bar the next bar the next bar and so on note of course it will only scan in the azimuth area we've set it currently 30 degrees left 30 degrees right if we moved it to say 10 over there it now scans between here the bars happen very quickly a very quick refresh rate and if i put it back slower refresh rate but more coverage if you're wondering why these target bricks don't disappear for a while once we've stopped scanning them it's because that they have a memory mode they will be predicted for a few seconds until it's decided they can no longer be seen and then they will disappear which brings us on to the bricks a thing that we can see an aeroplane in the sky is represented by a brick that is that little white box that you can see there 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 all of those are things in the sky that we can see we know which direction they go because of the doppler effect and therefore they have those little white tails that shows us which way they are moving just to reiterate if we move our radar so that we can no longer see them so let's aim our radar elevation down i'm going to aim it right down we're now scanning down here towards the ocean we are no longer covering these bricks with our radar they will disappear again after a few seconds because once they've uh, gone out of memory mode so let me just run that forward a few seconds and they've disappeared i want to bring the map into our radar display i move my radar up so we're covering a good uh, elevation of roughly where they're going to be and they repopulate almost immediately generally speaking it is not a good idea to max your radar out it's not a good idea generally speaking to have 60 degrees left 60 degrees right and four bars because the refresh rate is very slow look how long it takes this azimuth carrot to go left and right and look how long it takes this to go up and down it makes very poor radar performance best thing i think is to set at a3 and then if you need a very fast track then you can bring the bars down if you want that's how i suggest using the radar on the f-16 so we know where the targets are now you can see these uh, colored symbols and colored numbers let's ignore those for now i want to ignore them because that information is actually being given us by the awax so i'd like to cover the awax in a minute but let's just stick to the bricks the white bricks what if i want to know the altitude of one of those well i would move my acquisition cursor over one of those bricks and you can see a number appears pause it there 27 appears that means my radar has decided that that brick that contact is at 27,000 feet and again we can see him because 27,000 feet at that range is below our maximum 45,000 feet and above our minimum 8,000 feet speaking of IFF and coalition again just imagine that these AWAX colored symbols weren't here we wanted to find out which were friendly and which were friendly contacts we've got a mode for transponder interrogator on board the radar you can see mode for down here this basically reaches out and asks the transponder of each aircraft if it's friendly and friendly ones will reply let's just zoom out here so we can see things a bit better so i'm going to press tms left once short it's then going to see scan is written down here it did a scan and if we pause there is a little green circle around that contact for a few seconds watch this as it disappears and it's disappeared that said this guy here had responded with a mode for correct code therefore he's a friendly don't shoot him at this point i think we will bring the awax into the picture so as we saw we've got an awax here circling around gathering information on all of these contacts oh two have just run into each other amazing gathering contact on all of these uh, guys here and feeding them to us and it is going to overlay that onto our radar and give us some lovely information so we can see everything that has a color symbology at the moment the red and the green is coming to us from our AWACS so let's move our acquisition cursor away it's telling us if the contact is triangle it's a baddie if it's red it's a baddie the tail it's giving us is the direction the circle and the green is a friendly 
the number below it is its altitude in thousands of feet and it can track multiple targets so it's giving us information on all of the targets their direction their altitude and their coalition all of the time which is absolutely wonderful now the cool thing about this is if i turn my radar off yeah let's turn it to 10 degrees and let's move it out there so i can no longer see them in this aspect here let the bricks depopulate I can still see where everything is in theory because the AWACS is telling me all of these contacts are still out here. This is their direction, this is their altitude, and this is their coalition. Now I can repopulate with my own radar. And we can have a quick look at the HSD at the moment as well. This is our HSD on this screen. It's set to 60 miles here from us to the outer circle there. And it's essentially repeating everything. We've got all of the contacts out there, their altitude, their direction, and their coalition. You can see this is the donor AWACS because it has the dot in the middle. I should say at this point on our HSD we should really have our XMIT on. This allows us to be a contributor to the Link16 data link network so we can populate information for other people. Two more things we want to do. One is go over basic symbology. Two, go over locking modes and firing modes. Under the locking modes we'll also cover the new feature, the DTC, the dual target track. So let's start bottom left and go around. This here is our position in nautical miles and bearing degrees from bullseye to us. 66 miles to 248 from bullseye. This is the status of our mode for interrogator currently doing nothing. Now it's doing a scan wherever the radar can see. Also, if we press and hold TMS left and then let go after about a second, it will do a mode for interrogate, but just ahead of us here, not over the whole azimuth of the radar. And if we did that and let go, you see LOS line of sight in front of us. Next is our quantity of bars. Next is our azimuth in degrees left and right times 10. Next is our range scale. This we've already seen is our radar elevation scale and our radar elevation carrot. Down at the bottom is our radar azimuth scale and our radar azimuth carrot. Down here are options to take us to other screens and stuff like that, nothing that we're interested in today. Next, main mode selection, CRM or ACM. CRM, combined radar modes, that basically means something you would use if the target was beyond 10 nautical miles. If the target was within 10 nautical miles, you would go to ACM, Air Combat Maneuvers, general fighter pilot terminology. We're going to stay in CRM today. Next, uh, there. Next, we have two main modes of use for this radar, range while search or track while scan. Track while scan is covered in a separate video. We're just doing range while search today, which is considered our primary method. Next, expand and zoom. This is considered our normal cinematology. If I wanted to zoom in, basically, I could expand wherever the target acquisition cursor is. Let's say I want to expand over here. Expand, it zooms in four times. It allows us to work in much closer. For instance, if there was a flight of aircraft very close to each other, we could zoom in and access those aircraft like that and bring back to normal. Notice how some of these aircraft symbols have now become filled while some remain unfilled in terms of the colored AWACS symbology. That is because some of them, the ones that are filled, we have confirmed their coalition by doing all those mode for interrogations. That's called correlating with the AWACS. So these guys are now correlated with the AWACS. This guy here, we never picked up a transponder response from him because he was out of the picture at the time. Therefore, he was never correlated. Therefore, he's not become a filled or solid color. Next, override doesn't do anything at the moment. Uh, control panel. There are a series of things here that we can control with the radar. Moving target rejector, it just changes the pulse Doppler filter and it's not bottled a DCS so it doesn't matter. It's used for real life if you want to cut out ground traffic and stuff like that that the uh, radar would otherwise pick up. Altitude tracker, not modeled in DCS, don't worry about that. Target hits, this is modeled. So you remember earlier on when we moved our radar away from the targets, the bricks, the white things depopulate after a certain amount of hits with this thing here, the azimuth carrot, once it goes past a target, picks him up, that's called a hit. How many hits must the target, the brick, miss not be seen for before it disappears? Currently it's set to three. Therefore, it will not disappear until it has missed three hits. Radar level, not implemented. Power management. 
not implemented. This guy here, no one can work out what it is. Frequency, agility, band, not implemented. And these guys here change the channel so that we don't use the same frequency as another guy's radar, not implemented in DCS and probably never will be. So let's get out of control. So that's our symbology. Now let's look at the types of locks, or tracks, and how we can go and fire a missile at someone. So within the main mode, range while search, there are three types of tracks. There is an STT, a single target track, a SAM, situational awareness mode track, otherwise known as a bug to fighter pilots, and a DTT, a dual target track. Let's start with STT because it's just the easiest ones to show. I want to lock one of these guys up, okay? I've decided to choose him, the non-correlated one. I'm going to put my target acquisition cursor above him. I'm going to press TMS forward or up once and again twice that's given me an stt a single target track this type of track focuses all of my radar's power onto one guy it will forget everything else it's useful because it means there's a lot of radar power going on to that guy and it's very hard for him to therefore break a lock these three different types of tracks we're going to look at all have advantages and disadvantages. Remember, we have a very finite amount of aircraft radar power to use, and we have to tailor that as best as we can for each engagement. So now we have a track. Obviously, you can see the track symbology. He's yellow. Otherwise, we can still see his vector. The triangle we can see his coalition and we can still see his altitude. Uh, we're actually missing a very important piece of symbology. I've accidentally gone back to nav mode. So I'm going to put myself in missile override mode again, like we did at the beginning of the video. There we go. That's good. Other target specific symbology. Target's aspect angle. He is L heading left of us at 16 degrees. Target track 100. So assuming he was, I don't know, that guy there, his heading would be... 100. Hostiles airspeed in knots and our combined speed in knots known as closure rate. Now once we achieve a track like this we are given L and S launch and steering information. So in terms of range for launch we have a DLZ a dynamic launch zone. It's called dynamic because the scale changes based on the hostiles range. So the range scale zero miles there in this case 20 miles there and 40 miles there. That is the current range of the hostile, about 35 miles, and his closure rate in knots. R max, the maximum range that we can launch the missile and have it hit him if he does not manoeuvre. R no escape, the range at which we can launch the missile and it hit him even if he manoeuvres. R minimum, all missiles have an R minimum because they have a fuse delay on them so that we do not shoot ourselves or our friends down. Two circles, bigger circle, ASE circle allowable steering error circle and a little circle steering dot or steering circle and that is showing you how to steer simply fly so that the small circle is in the big circle once this is in range here pull the trigger it's all repeated here i'm not going to go through it in detail dlz ase a target designation box there wait until it's in range and fire note one thing the azimuth and the elevation carrots are now solid they are locked onto that guy okay that's the end of it that's the end of stt now i'm going to unlock uh, a level if i'm going to completely unlock by going tms down twice once twice we're now completely unlocked we do not have a track let's go and get another track uh let's get this friendly it's a bit naughty but let's go just go and do it i'm going to go tms once this time to get a sam a situational awareness mode track or a bug. Most of this stuff is identical. DLZ, identical. ASC, identical. Stuff up here, identical. The difference between a SAM is that, as well as tracking this guy and giving us L and S, launch and steer, we can also carry on scanning in between this bar here and this bar here to keep, you guessed it, situational awareness. So if I unpause, we can still see what all these our guys are doing. Note how the radar is centered on our target here, but the azimuth carrot will scan left and right to keep updated on the other targets. It's very important because you do not want to lose situational awareness on what the other targets are doing. Again, in the elevation, our radar is centered on him, but scanning up and down slightly to keep an eye on the other target. Uh, two other things, I sorry I forgot to mention. 
The missile, if it is an AMRAM and it has the ability to go fully active slash pitbull, the pitbull marker is shown on a circle there on the DLZ and time of flight in seconds here until the missile goes active slash pitbull. As we've got everything set up there with our current bug or situational aware mode track, we are within DRZ, we're within our match. We could press and hold weapon release. The missile would fire and that would probably be a kill. That's as far as we take that. I'm going to unlock now with TMS aft or down. Now we've just got to show the DTT, the dual target track. For this to work, we need a couple of targets near each other. So I'm just going to wait until that happens. In the meantime, just to show how we can traverse between SAM and STT. So if I put my acquisition cursor on him, TMS up once, SAM, again, STT. And if I go down one layer, back to SAM, forward one layer, STT. Aft one layer, SAM, aft one layer, unlocked. Okay, here come a couple of baddies together. Let's use our DTT, dual target trap. Super simple. All I'm gonna do is get a SAM on this guy or a bug, TMS up once and then do the same for this guy here. They don't really have to be next to each other, but it's just easier to show there. Okay, the symbology's gone yellow, so we've got both of these guys in a track. The current one that is presenting launch and steer information, i.e. the ASE circle and the DLZ, is this guy here. So if I were to press the trigger or the weapons release to fire the missile, it would fire on him. If I want to swap it though, I could press TMS right short, and it will swap. This guy is now providing us launch and steer information. If I were to press the missile fire now, I would fire on him. So let's go and fire some missiles for fun. Unpause, because I've been actually been paused all this time. Uh, 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 there we go. Right, look at our DLZ. Wait until it's in range to fire. Master arm is on. Fire weapon one. Weapon away. And TMS right. Launch and steer from the other guy. Fire weapon two. Weapon two away. That's how we'd use our DTT. Pause it there. Just to look at the HSD, you can see the guy with the circle around is the guy that we're currently garnering launch and steer information from that guy there. And back to the radar, new symbology here. We have a new tail indicator added to the target once an AMRAM has been fired on him. So if I fired an AMRAM at him, and I have, then you can see we've got a solid square tail at the back of him. When the missile goes pitbull, active, that will flash and when the time to impact the predicted time to impact has reached zero a red cross will show through it so let's watch that happen ah it appears that that bit is not yet working it does say in the manual that it is work in progress so that is at least what we can expect to see when that's fully working. A couple of other things with DTT, if we move the scan zone so that one of these targets is no longer being covered, it will still continue to track them, even if it doesn't continue to track other non-tracked bricks like these guys up here. Uh, so that's one thing to mention. Also, in terms of range, once our dual track targets get within 10 miles, it will then stop scanning for other targets in our scan area or our scan volume. If the DTT gets within three nautical miles of us, it will automatically switch into an STT, a single target track, presumably because, you know, it's an ACM range at that point. Just a couple of other bits of generic symbology I realize I've missed. Wedding cake, our currently selected steer point. And we've got uh, this guy here is the horizon. So we can see which uh, attitude we are flying at in terms of roll. And elevation and finally valued viewers i'm just going to unlock this target and i'm going to so now we do have the ability to to filter the display here we've got a lot of information going on here as you know and we're probably going to have more information added so what if we want to filter it uh, to best suit what we want to see well we've got transmit switch iff out and transmit switch iff in if we can do short presses of them we will cycle through various filter states so i'm going to use in first so currently everything is shown all is shown press it once FTR so this means that the AWACS surveillance tracks are removed press it again targets this means that surveillance and PPLI tracks are removed press it again back to all also if we wanted to press out we get none 
this temporarily removes all of the data link tracks press it again it'll go back to whichever uh, filter we had previously all so that's another way that we can filter the display to suit what we need going to be really useful if you've got loads of tracks in uh, one display and that ends our roundup so the aim of this video was to keep you updated with the various changes to the fire control radar in the f-16 from release to september 2021 i hope that's been useful to you and once the radar is finished we'll go over it all again see you later